Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Pagani Design PD1676. This watch is available from Pagani Design AliExpress official store for €106. Euro. So firstly, let's look at the box that the watch comes in, and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with the piece. So the watch comes in a watch box, which is protected by this white cardboard outer sleeve, which one removes. And this is the watch box itself. The watch is available with two watch box versions. One can buy the standard cardboard Pagani Design watch box, or alternatively pay extra for this premium watch box. And I think it's worth paying the extra. Very nice execution, flawless stitching throughout, and it's coated with a vinyl plastic, which has a grained finish to it to give the appearance of PU leather. The interior is upholstered to a high standard with a velour fabric and the watch sits on a padded pillow cushion in the base as one would expect. So nice presentation and I like the premium version of their watch boxes. They're certainly better quality than the standard cardboard watch boxes that the watches usually come with. With regards to other items, this is the plastic guarantee card and I'm pleased to report the watch is covered by the usual 12 month international guarantee which is very reassuring. This is the owner's instruction manual. Although basic it does suffice in explaining the operation of the movement use, which is the Seiko VK63 Mecha Quartz. Clear, concise diagrams and the instructions are in English. This is the Pagani Design microfiber branded polishing cloth that comes with a watch. I always think it's a nice touch to get a branded microfiber polishing cloth, irrespective of the price point of the piece. One also gets this tag, and one also gets a screwdriver for resizing the screw pins in the bracelet. And lastly, as an alternative to the Oyster style bracelet that comes on the watch, one also gets this NATO strap. 316L grade stainless steel buckle and tang, mirror polished and stainless steel hardware throughout. As you can see, the two keepers are stitched either side. Good quality stitching. And I like the quality of it. It's ballistic nylon and it's got plenty of holes in it to fine tune the length. So good to get this NATO strap included with the piece. So with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the Pagani Design PD1676. The watch is clearly an homage to the Rolex Paul Newman Daytona and it has very similar proportions to that piece. 40mm case diameter. We have a lug to lug measurement of 47.5mm, a thickness of 13.3mm and a lug width of 20mm. The Oyster style bracelet tapers from 20mm at the lugs down to the flip block clasp as you can see. The flip block clasp is finished to a high standard, brass satin finished to the outer portions, mirror polished to the centre section and we have Pagani design engraved to a high standard. Flawless mirror polishing to the flanks and it's very nicely finished. Now I've been critical of other clasps of Pagani design watches I've reviewed because they had sharp corners and also razor sharp end to the edge. This one has been finished to a high standard. The corners aren't sharp and it doesn't have that razor sharp edge on the end. So the quality of the finishing to this clasp is very good. And I'm pleased to see some improvement from Pagani Design with regards to their clasp finishing. Solid milled interior to the 316L grade stainless steel clasp as you can see. And we've got a matte bead blasted effect to the centre section. So it's very well executed. Now it also comes with an EasyLink style extension as you can see and this adds five millimeters of on-the-fly adjustment and I think it's a credible alternative to using a glide lock mechanism it is useful to have that five millimeters of extension if one's wrist expands it clicks in and out of the body of the clasp well it's a good tight fit and I really think they have improved upon that as well nice positive click to the flip lock clasp and good positive secondary click to the flip lock itself so with regards to the rest of the specification, we have a double dome sapphire crystal. Now the negative of the double dome sapphire crystal is there is no anti-reflective coating on the underside. And as you can see, when I tilt the piece in the light, it is highly reflective. There is a lot of glare from the underside of the sapphire crystal. And also the silver subdial hands and the silver baton hands are also mirror polished, so they're highly reflective. So this piece would really benefit from clear AR coating and that is something I would like to see Pagani Design improve upon and add it to the underside of their sapphire crystals. It's got a tall profile to the double dome sapphire crystal. It looks like a top hat or boxed crystal as you can see. I like the edge of the crystal projecting above the ceramic bezel insert. It's very aesthetically pleasing the way it catches the light. So this has the classic panda dial as per the Paul Newman Daytona, which this is an homage to. And I like the dial layout, it has a vintage aesthetic. And the black subdials contrast very well with the matte white 
main dial so it's very well laid out good symmetry and I'm pleased that Pagani Design didn't use a date complication on this piece because it really would spoil this being an homage to the Paul Newman Daytona so I like the symmetry of the three subdials with the absence of the date complication which they normally put between the four and five o'clock indexes on the dial so the subdials are clearly legible because the mirror polished subdial hands contrast very well with the concentric circles of the subdials and the quality of the white printing of the Arabic numerals is very good on the subdials and Pagani Design deserve full credit for a very well executed dial, it's very well made. The bezel is made from ceramic and they, again they deserve full credit because the quality of the indexing on the tachymeter scale, the Arabic numerals and also the ticks on it are inlaid very well with white paint. So it's a very well executed ceramic bezel insert and the tachymeter scale is clearly legible. It's a very high quality bezel. I think they've made the correct decision by putting a stainless steel ring around the ceramic bezel inserts because it does retain the vintage aesthetic of the Paul Newman Daytona which of course had a stainless steel bezel rather than ceramic. It predated the use of ceramic bezel inserts as per the contemporary Rolex Daytona. So the mirror polishing to the stainless steel bezel is done to a very high standard, absolutely flawless and also it complements the ceramic bezel insert. The flanks of the case have flawless mirror polishing and Pagani Design deserve full credit because this is a very well finished head of the piece. I like the mirror polishing, it's done very well and it also contrasts very well with the brass satin finishing to the tops of the lugs. So we have a screw down crown which provides an effective hermetic seal to 100 meters as does the screw down pushers. So let's test the crown execution. Coin edge finished, embossed with a Pagani Design brand emblem. Very smooth. It's impressive and this is something that Pagani Design deserve full credit for. They do screw down crowns very well. Minimal resistance to it, it's a nice low friction screw down crown. So as this uses the Seiko VK63 Mecha Quartz it does still have the date wheel underneath the dial so one can feel in the first click position a phantom date setting position when one rotates the crown anti-clockwise one can feel the date wheel moving round and clicking over one can hear it it's audible and one can also feel the date wheel clicking over so that's something to bear in mind there is a phantom date setting position even though there is no date complication Pulling it out to the second click position hacks the movement. I've now stopped the second hand dead on the sub dial and this is now the time setting position. So absolutely silky smooth. It's a characteristic of the Seiko VK63 Mecha Quartz. It's very smooth to set the time. No back play whatsoever. Absolute pleasure to set the time. Pushing it back in restarts the movement and as you can see the second hand on the 6 o'clock sub dial begins to tick around. So let's test screwing it back down. Immediate thread pickup, this is excellent screw down crown execution. 100 meters of water resistance is perfectly acceptable for a chronograph piece. So I really like the crown action, I think it's very well done. So let's test the screw down pushers, I'll unscrew both pushers. Absolutely silky smooth, again no friction, no resistance, they're very well done. Let's test the chronograph complication. Pushing the top pusher activates the chronograph complication and as you can see the chronograph second hand begins to tick around the dial. Pushing it again stops the chronograph complication and pressing the lower pusher activates the flyback complication. So this will make the chronograph second hand fly back to the 12 o'clock index on the dial. Perfect. Perfect alignment from the Seiko VK63 Mecha Quartz and this is something I really like about it. The VK63 always resets the bang on 12 o'clock so perfect alignment every time. The pushers are very good to screw back down and they provide an effective hermetic seal to 100 meters of water resistance as does the screw down crown. So the screw down crown execution is excellent and the screw down pusher execution is also excellent. Now I'll show you the case back. It has a solid 316L grade stainless steel screw down case back which provides an effective hermetic seal to 100 meters and as you can see they have engraved it with this checkered pattern and also a car. It's mirror polished to a high standard and it's also engraved to a high standard and the specification is also engraved. Now, personally, I think they've made a mistake with this. They would have been better just to simply engrave the Pagani Design brand emblem or Pagani Design as per earlier versions of their Daytona homages such as the PD1644. Um, and really, I think that a sterile case back as per the Daytona or alternatively engraving the Pagani Design brand logo and emblem 
would be better than this checkered pattern and also the car because it really doesn't fit the aesthetic of this being on a mask of the Paul Newman Daytona. They should have done something closer to that piece with this sterile case back. But having said that, it's finished to a very high standard and it is very low profile, as you can see. And that's one of the benefits of this piece being powered by the VK63 Mecha Quartz rather than a manual wind or automatic piece because it means that the case back can be very flat and low profile and that reduces the thickness of the piece. So I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my 8 inch wrist. Now I haven't sized the bracelet, I've simply taken the watch out of the watch box and I'm pleased to report it fits my 8 inch wrist with no problems whatsoever. This would actually fit up to an 8.5 inch wrist. I can easily slip my index finger underneath the bracelet and clasp at all times. The feel good factor and the comfort level of this piece is outstanding. The proportions of it are very good, 40mm ahead of the piece and we have a 47.5mm lug to lug measurement which is close to perfection. As you'll know from my previous reviews, I consider 48mm to be the sweet spot regardless of whether you have a 6 to 7 inch wrist or a 7 to 8 inch wrist respectively. So at 47.5 it's very close to perfection at 48mm so the lug to lug measurement is good. 20mm is the correct lug width for the Oyster style bracelet. The 20mm bracelet tapers down to the clasp with a, with a nice taper and also 20mm perfectly balances the 40mm head of the piece. So the proportions are excellent. It's also deceptively low profile. It's 13.3mm even though it has a double domed sapphire crystal as you can see. I expected this to be in excess of 14mm due to the double domed sapphire crystal. Now circa 13mm means a watch will easily slip underneath a shirt cuff if you wear a business shirt so therefore it's an ideal daily wear piece. At 133 it is very low profile on wrist and it will slip underneath a shirt cuff with no difficulties. Absolutely gorgeous to look at on wrist, it's a very good looking piece. Personally I think it would look better if they had brush satin finished the centre links rather than mirror polish them as per the contemporary Daytona because it would give the watch a more tool watch aesthetic and really better fit it being a vintage piece and an homage to the Paul Newman Daytona. I think the brush satin finishing would have complemented it. Mirror polishing really does make it look more like a contemporary Daytona which doesn't really fit with the Paul Newman Daytona dial layout. But having said that it's a very good looking piece, it's incredibly comfortable and it's 140 grams which is very good and that's another benefit of it being a Mecha Quartz rather than a manual wind or automatic powered piece because it reduces the heft of the piece and really under 150 grams is very comfortable because it gives a feeling of wrist presence and quality but it also gives a feeling of comfort when wearing the piece for long periods of time such as 8 to 12 hours per day so good looking piece feel good factor is good comfort level is outstanding right so let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to the absolute maximum so as always i'm going to use my 100 uv led torch to charge it up to the absolute peak Right, so that's now fully charged and as you can see, the loom is disappointing. They've clearly used C3 Luminova rather than C3 Super Luminova, so this is a clear cost-cutting measure. Now, they have applied enough loom on the baton hand so that one can differentiate between the shorter hour hand and the longer minute hands, and they've just applied loom dots on the indices on the dial. So, yes, one can clearly read the time in the dark, but however, as you can see, it's not glowing initially very brightly, and it's now continuing to fade and fade fast, and it will continue to fade to nothing very quickly. This is something that I'm always critical of Pagani Design watches, because they always use low-quality, low-cost C3 Superluminova on their watches, and it's something I would really like to see them improve upon, even if it means an increase in the wholesale price and of course an increase in the retail price of their watches because collectors would happily pay more to have C3 Superluminova or alternatively BGW9 Superluminova on the Pagani Design watches. So as you can see it's now beginning to fade very fast to nothing and on the baton hands it's immediately fading to nothing and this is very disappointing. So this is one of the main negatives to the watch. It's something that we always expect with Pagani Design, weak quality Luminova. Right, so let's discuss the movement used because it's one of my favourite aspects of the piece. 
So this is powered by the Seiko VK63 Mecha Quartz. It's a reliable, well-proven workhorse Mecha Quartz movement, which is made in Japan. The correct choice for this piece. It has a three-year battery life, which is very good. Now, the three-year battery life is based upon you using the chronograph complication for 60 minutes per day. But in reality, you're not going to be using the chronograph complication for anything like 60 minutes per day. So it's nothing unusual for the battery life of a VK63 to last in excess of three years, and they often last for four to five years. So that's something to bear in mind. If you're looking for a no-nonsense piece, for example, if you wear this as in a collection and you rotate it, and therefore you're looking for the convenience of a Mecha Quartz, you're looking for a chronograph that you don't have to manually wind or wear daily for eight to 12 hours per day to top it up with an automatic movement, this is the ideal choice. Three years battery life, which in reality is four to five years if you don't use the chronograph for 60 minutes per day. So it's a very peace of mind watch. Now the stated accuracy of the VK63 is plus or minus 20 seconds per month. And I want you to consider that. That isn't plus or minus 20 seconds per day or per week. Plus or minus 20 seconds per month is better than plus or minus one second per day. So it's a very accurate Seiko Mecha Quartz movement. And I really like it. The VK63 is one of my personal favorites. Really the only negative to it is the absence of the date complication because it means a phantom date setting position. When one pulls the crown out to the first click, that is the date setting position. And one can still feel, as I've discussed, the date complication ticking over to the next day. So one has to pull it out to the second click to get the time setting position. So that really is the only consideration. You have to put up with the phantom date setting position on the crown when setting the time. But having said that, I think they've made the correct decision by not having a date complication because that would ruin the symmetry of the dial and ruin this being an homage to the Paul Newman Daytona. So I really like the VK63. It's reliable, it's accurate. The build quality is very good, the quality control, there's no reliability issues whatsoever and a four to five year battery life is outstanding with plus or minus 20 seconds per month. Right, so lastly I'll summarise the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the watch should meet two criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. This is a difficult piece to evaluate and I'll explain why. The head of the piece is excellent. So I would immediately say it's excellent quality and excellent value. However, the bracelet on this piece is poor quality and it really lets down the watch. And I'll explain why. If you look closely, there is a lot of play on the end link and the bracelet, both lateral side to side play and also play up and down. It has play in every direction and it's significant. If you look at the amount of play, we're looking at one to two millimeters of play around the pin in every direction. So it makes this annoying rattling sound and it's notable on wrist because the bracelet constantly rattles. Now that's compounded by the other screw pins in the bracelet also having significant play. As you can see, if you look, there is significant lateral play in every single one of the screw pins in the bracelet. And this is wholly unacceptable. This is a 106 euro piece. Now, the thing that frustrates me about Pagani design is they are capable of making a well-executed oyster style bracelet. For example, I've previously reviewed several Pagani design watches, including the PD1661, and they have some excellent oyster style bracelets on the PD1661 without any of this end link play and without any play in the screw pins. So they are capable of making oyster style bracelets to a very high standard. And had they put one of those high quality PD1661 oyster style bracelets on this piece, it would make it excellent quality and excellent value. Now with regards to the clasp, the clasp is good quality. As I've discussed, no sharp corners on it and it doesn't have the razor sharp edge I've experienced on other Pagani design watches. So the quality control, the build's quality and the finishing of the clasp is good, but it's really let down by this abhorrent rattly bracelet. So if you purchase this piece, I want you to factor in the cost of putting this on a rubber strap, leather strap or alternatively the NATO strap that comes with the watch. So to evaluate this piece, I'm going to split it into two, the head of the piece and the bracelet. I would describe the head of the piece as excellent quality and excellent value. The bracelet is poor quality, so overall that brings the, the value and the quality of the watch down from being excellent to good. So I would say to you, it's worth buying the watch for the head of the piece, but bear in mind you're not going to be satisfied wearing it on this rat rattly bracelet. 
So I'm going to declare it excellent quality and excellent value for the head of the piece and I'm going to declare the bracelet poor quality and poor value. But overall I'm still going to declare it a champagne watch for lemonade money because it is worth buying for the head of the piece and wearing it on a NATO strap, rubber strap or leather strap. I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Pagani Design PD1676. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.